we started with uh, the signs and symptoms and the acute and chronic diseases, right? Now, based on the duration of uh, disease, how long it will be prevailing in a patient. Based on that, we have divided them into acute and chronic. A part three of the same topic we are going to discuss about uh, what causes a disease or causes of the disease. Now, when we talk about causes of disease, there are various levels of causes of disease. There are, in fact, multiple causes of any disease, right? So, multiple level. If there are many levels of causes of disease, into that many levels also, which is the most close or nearest or the immediate cause of disease, that we need to identify, right? Okay, let us take an example. See, if a baby is suffering from loose motion, okay, so when we say that a baby is suffering from loose motion, so what can be the immediate cause? Somebody will say that maybe a baby is suffering from some viral infection, say for example, viral or bacterial. So the immediate cause, whenever we talk about, we are definitely speaking about the pathogen, the harmful cause, the harmful microbe as the immediate cause of the disease. Now it can be a bacteria, it can be a fungi, it can be a, any bacteria, okay. So say, for example, the baby is suffering from any viral infection. So the next immediate question will be, where did the virus come from? Then the answers would be multiple. Maybe due to the contaminated water, unclean water, uh, or unclean food. Okay. So why then one baby is suffering from this disease, why not the other? If the other baby is also fed with the same food and water, why the other baby is not suffering from the same kind of problem that is nose motion? Then the uh, answers would be again variable. Why the other baby is not suffering? Because the other baby is or other baby is healthy. Okay. If the other baby is healthy, why not the first baby is healthy? Why the baby which is suffering from loose motion, why then it is not healthy? Then again multiple causes, right? Maybe the baby is poorly fed, malnourished, okay, for not getting poor nutrition. This can be one of the causes. So why then poor, poor nutrition, why malnutrition in that baby? Again the causes would be because the baby is from a poor family, there's not enough of food, no proper meal, that can be one of the causes. No proper hygiene maintained in the house, no proper sanitation, then the public water supply system is not proper and so on several reasons. Even the other causes can be, maybe the baby has some genetic problem due to which usually due to low immunity, lack of immunity, low resistance power, the baby suffers very quickly from any kind of infectious agent. So, I mean, there are multiple causes of any disease, right? But whenever students we talk about the, uh, you know, cause of a disease, we definitely seek for the immediate cause of a disease, okay? And the immediate cause is usually the main cause, in fact, and the others are the subordinate classes or the levels of causes, okay? So, the immediate cause is the microbial infection with which a person is suffering from. Now that microbial infection can be, you know, something causing problems, causing ailment, causing disease, or transferring disease at the community level, at the society level, into a big mob, big population, or can it it can remain to the individual itself. The infection can remain to that person alone. Okay. So diseases, you know, can be classified based on the kind of microbes we are getting infected with, okay. Microbes definitely they are the agents of causing diseases. Fine. So based on the immediate cause of the disease, okay, based on the agents causing the disease, one can divide a disease, you know, into infectious disease and non-infectious disease, right. So earlier what we studied about acute and chronic, and acute the disease will last for only small amount of time, very short duration of time like common cold flu and all. Whereas chronic throughout the lifetime, you know, bringing about very adverse effect on the health in the later stages of life or throughout the lifetime also. Like one example I would like to share with you all. See earlier peptic ulcer, if you have heard peptic ulcers when we say this uh, general term, the stomach ulcers. People what they used to feel earlier that peptic ulcers are nothing but you know a common kind of chronic disease chronic again chronic long time which you know remains in a body throughout the lifetime of a person so 
peptic ulcer, the common term stomach ulcer, was considered as a chronic disease. Right? So people used to think that due to you know the stressful life, not having proper meals, not having proper sleep, a person usually suffers from peptic ulcer. What actually happens in peptic ulcer is a person suffers from you know stomach pain, bleeding uh, in the stomach internally, okay, stomach and duodenum. The the part of the intestine, small intestine, where it actually originates. So you, do you remember? Students have studied uh, duodenum, ileum, jejunum. These are the divisions of the small intestine, the initial part, then the second half, then the final half of the small intestine, right? So the duodenum part, then the stomach part, the inner lining of the stomach starts bleeding. So there is inflammation, there is inflammation swelling in the internal region of the stomach. Okay, so earlier people used to think that peptic ulcers are caused by some reason like very very stressful life. Okay, but thanks to two Australian people who I mean seriously studied about this kind of infection, what actually are the causes and uh, it was a rock called I think some uh, Robin Baron, he was a pathologist and uh, then a clinical fellow Barry Marshall. Okay, so these two people who they studied about this kind of infection, in fact, Mr. Robin Warren, he found that there uh, were a group of bacteria found near the inflammation of stomach from, when he studied about that in detail, he found that many of the people who suffer from peptic ulcers, inside the inflammation, inside the lining of the stomach, where the inflammation was seen, around that inflammation, many 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 kinds of bacteria were also seen the causative organism of peptic ulcers and these bacteria are called as helicobacter pylori or h pylori okay if you fail to remember the name in the exam so directly read h dot pylori so these two people i mean it was actually for the person sir robin wherein he discovered this bacteria near the lining of the stomach where this infection or this inflammation was seen okay so he first studied about that, then the another clinical fellow, Sir Barry Marshall, even he studied about this in detail and both of them together found that Helicobacter pylori, the bacterium, is responsible for causing peptic ulcer. That means this can be cured because it is caused by bacteria. So by the use of the appropriate antibiotics, peptic ulcers can be cured and hence peptic ulcers because of the you know uh, wonderful contribution in the field of discovery of this kind of bacteria the positive organism for causing peptic ulcers so because of their discovery their contribution in finding out the actual cause now no more peptic ulcer is considered as a chronic disease okay uh, there is a treatment for it and antibiotics work very efficiently against this kind of infection and people get cured also it's not like uh, throughout the lifetime one has to suffer from stomach ulcers okay so because of their contributory work in this field and uh, the discovery of the positive organism for peptic ulcer these two people from australia they were awarded with nobel prize in the year 2005 uh, remember their names or which kind of bacterium they discovered and the reason i mean for uh, this bacterium caused which kind of infection that can be asked in your Olympiad exam or into any other competitive exams as well. Okay, so this is one thing why we are studying about the causes of disease students. Is you cannot conclude merely or like earlier also I said you merely on the basis of signs, symptoms, uh, or just uh, without knowing the actual cause that a disease is chronic or infectious, non infectious. I think okay, one has to you know study in detail about it uh, right from its main cause. Then mode of infection, okay, so based on all this, one can say that on the basis of mode of infection now, mode of infection, to so how many people it gets transferred through the pathogens, okay, the immediate cause of disease is microbes, definitely, and most of the time it is unicellular microbes, in some cases it is multicellular also, like scariasis, okay, so based on the kind of infection at the community level, whether they are spreading, infectious agents or the microbes whether they are spreading any infection any disease at the community level or it is at an individual level based on this we can divide any disease into again for the two categories that is infectious and non-infectious again called as communicable and non-communicable so in our next session our fourth session we will be discussing about what is an infectious disease which diseases are included into this term non-infectious which are the diseases included in this fine students 
So that's all for now. If you want, you can note it down. Fine. Uh, practical answers is all note. Fine.